Hey guys and welcome to Stadia.com. Today the topic that we'll be talking about is the development of face. So the facial development takes place very early during the embryogenesis. Our face is very unique and it is different for each person. But the embryological origin is the same. Now let's look at it. Earlier in the fourth week of the intrauterine life, five facial prominences appear around the stomodium meaning the future mouth site. These prominences are the frontonasal prominence, the paired maxillary prominences, and the paired mandibular prominences. So the maxillary and the mandibular prominences are basically the derivatives of the first pharyngeal arches. Over here is the first pharyngeal arch. Now, it also occurs due to the proliferation of the neural crest cells. These are basically the multipotent developing cells present in the embryo. Now, let's look at the developing embryo. Here is the stomodium, meaning the future site for the mouth. Here is the frontonasal prominence. Just lateral to it is the maxillary prominence. And then we have the mandibular prominences, caudal to the stomodium. Now, by the end of the fourth week, bilateral oval thickenings appear in the surface ectoderm of the inferior lateral part of the frontonasal prominence as we can see in this picture. These are known as the nasal palicods. Now these nasal palicods are basically the primordia for the nasal epithelium, meaning in the future they are going to develop into the nasal epithelium and the endoderm invaginates to form the nasal pit. Now next what happens is that the nasal prominences are further divided into two parts, the medial part and the lateral nasal prominence. Now, during the next two weeks, the maxillary prominences continue to increase in size. What happens next is that eventually these maxillary prominences grow medially, that means towards each other, and eventually they compress the medial nasal prominences towards the midline. Now the cleft which was present between the medial nasal prominence and the maxillary prominence, that is lost. Eventually that leads to the formation of the upper lip. So that means that the two medial nasal prominences and the maxillary prominences are responsible for the formation of the upper lip. Now the maxillary and the lateral nasal prominences are separated by a deep furrow. This deep furrow is known as the nasolacrimal groove. The ectoderm which is present in the floor of this groove forms a solid epithelial cord. Now what is ectoderm? Basically there are three germ layers present within the first two weeks of the development. These include the mesoderm which is inside, the ectoderm which is the outer layer and the endoderm which encloses the mesoderm. Now eventually like we talked about the cord which has just been formed, canalization is going to occur as a result of apoptosis. And now it converts to a nasolacrimal duct. The upper end of the nasolacrimal duct is going to widen to form the lacrimal sac. Eventually the cord is going to detach and by the sixth week, the maxillary and the lateral nasal prominences are going to merge with each other along the line of the nasolacrimal groove. Now, when the maxillary and the medial nasal prominence is going to merge, this is going to result in the formation of the upper jaw, the upper lip, and the separation of the nasal pits from the stomodium. Next, the medial nasal prominence is going to merge together to form the intramaxillary segment. Over here, we can see the medial nasal prominences. Slowly, they're going to come together over the weeks, merge to form the intramaxillary segment. Now, this intramaxillary segment is responsible for the formation of the labial component, which forms the philtrum of the upper lip or the middle part of the upper lip. Number two, the upper jaw component, which carries the four incisor, basically the pre-maxillary part of the maxilla, 
and its associated gingiva, the gummy part. And number three, a palatal component, which is going to form the triangular primary palate. So now we've reached the end of the sixth week and we're going to have the primordial jaws, which is basically the Meckel's cartilage. It is a mass of a mesenchymal tissue. A linear thickening of the ectoderm, which is known as the labiogingival lamina. So the labiogingival lamina is eventually going to grow into the underlying nasal chyme and eventually most of it is going to degenerate, but it is going to leave a groove between the lips and the gingiva. A small area of this labiogingival lamina is going to persist in the median plane and this is going to form the future frenulum of the upper lip, which is going to attach the lip to the gum. Now, continuing with the formation of the secondary palate. So basically, two mesenchymal projections are going to extend from the internal part of the maxillary prominences. These projections are known as the lateral palatine processes or the palatine shelves. Initially, they are going to project inferior medially, which means downwards and inwards on each side of the tongue. Let's look at this picture. This picture is going to help us understand what this means. Over here, we have the palatine shelves, which are located downwards and inwards on each side of the tongue. Now, as the jaws are going to grow and elongate, they are going to pull the tongue away from its root. and it is going to be brought lower into the mouth. So as we move on to the seventh and the eighth week of the intrauterine life, these lateral palatine shells are going to assume a horizontal position, as we can see in this picture. They are now above the tongue. Eventually, these palatine shelves are going to fuse and they're going to form the secondary palate. Now, the bone is gradually going to develop in the primary palate forming the premaxillary part of the maxilla, which carries the incisor teeth. Now, this bone formation is going to extend from the maxilla and the palatine bones into the lateral palatine processes, forming the hard palate. The palatine raphe is basically going to indicate the line of fusion of the palatine processes. Now, the posterior part does not ossify. They extend beyond the nasal septum to fuse and form the soft palate and the soft conical projection known as the uvula. Anteriorly, the shelves are going to fuse with the triangular primary palate. Over here, we can see the palatine shelves which have fused together and here is the primary palate. So the incisive foramen is going to become the landmark between the primary and the secondary palate. Now moving on to the formation of the nasal cavity. So at sixth week, the nasal pits are also going to deepen. Over here we have the nasal pits. So these nasal pits are going to deepen and considerably grow as the surrounding nasal prominences also grow. So over here we have the oronasal membrane this membrane is going to separate the nasal pit from the oral cavity. Now, just next to the membrane, we have the nasal pit and below it, we have the tongue. Now, this blue area is known as the medial nasal prominence. So, as the oronasal membrane degenerates, a space is formed or created, which is known as the primitive cornea. Now, the primitive nasal cavity and the primitive oral cavity are now in communication and this is eventually going to be separated by the development of the palate. Now, the superior, middle and the inferior nasal cornea are going to develop as elevations present on the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Now, eventually the ectodermal epithelium in the roof of the nasal cavity is going to specialize to form the olfactory epithelium. So guys, this was everything you needed to know about the development of face. I hope you guys learned. Thank you.